Number 10. Thomas Jefferson wasn't a Democrat. He was a Democratic Republican. He co-founded the party in opposition to the Federalist Party, the only other political party at the time. Democratic Republicans favored state over federal power, prioritized the agrarian interest of the southern states, and believed in strict adherence to the Constitution. Jefferson left office in 1809, and by 1828, many felt his party had been corrupted. Thus, Andrew Jackson and Martin Van Buren formed the Democratic Party as a return to form. Though Jefferson was never a member, he was the party's spiritual founder. Number 9. Jefferson was the first president to enter the White House as a single man. His wife died nearly two decades before he took office and made him promise never to remarry. Thus, his daughter served as first lady and White House hostess. Number 8. Two of Thomas Jefferson's grandsons fought for the Confederacy in the Civil War. Colonel Thomas Jefferson Randolph and General George Randolph. However, it's possible he also had a grandson who fought for the Union. John Wales Jefferson is believed to be the grandson of Thomas Jefferson and his slave Sally Hemings. John, Thomas, and George all survived the war. Number 7. Jefferson was only 39 when his wife Martha died. Honoring her dying request, he never remarried. However, he had other romantic relationships. While serving as minister to Paris, he fell in love with Maria Causeway, a charming 26-year-old and wife to a British painter. Contemporaries alleged, and historians still allege, that he had relations with Sally Hemings, his slave and Martha's half-sister. Some historians claim Jefferson had affairs with other slaves, but this is generally disputed. Number 6. The French Revolution caused a rift between the Founding Fathers. Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe were very sympathetic, whereas Washington and Adams disliked how radical it was. Jefferson was the most enthusiastic, and even defended it when things turned violent. Quote, My own affections have been deeply wounded by some of the martyrs to this cause, but rather than it should have failed, I would have seen half the earth desolated. Number 5. It's estimated that Jefferson had one of the highest IQs of any president, second only to John Quincy Adams. He spoke and read multiple languages, was an extremely effective writer, had several inventions, and was very interested in science. Number 4. Though he was excellent with the pen, Jefferson hated public speaking. After a year of serving with Jefferson in the Continental Congress, John Adams noted he hadn't spoken publicly once, nor even uttered three sentences together. As president, he only gave two public speeches, his inaugural addresses. With a soft, high-pitched voice, a lisp, and a tendency to stutter, he wasn't naturally inclined toward speaking. It's also speculated he had social anxiety. Number 3. Though he's not known for it, Jefferson did serve in the military. At 27, he was appointed colonel of a Virginia militia where he managed regular drills, payrolls, and made sure militia fines made it to the sheriff. He also made use of his legal background and dealt with court-martials. In 1779, his militia commission ended after nine years when he was elected as Virginia's governor. Number 2. Jefferson appears on two different United States currency denominations the $2 bill, and the nickel. By comparison, George Washington appears on the quarter and the $1 bill. The other founding presidents, Adams, Madison, and Monroe, don't appear on any commonly used currencies. Despite the common misconception, $2 bills are still in circulation today, though they aren't used too regularly. Number 1. Many presidents long fancied themselves in the job, including Lyndon B. Johnson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Jefferson's predecessor, John Adams. But ever since he first ran in 1796, Jefferson, similar to Washington, was a reluctant candidate. He described it as a splendid misery, saying, quote, It brings nothing but increasing drudgery and daily loss of friends. As he neared the end of his second term, he compared himself to a prisoner awaiting freedom. His gravestone reads, quote, here was buried Thomas Jefferson, 
author of the Declaration of Independence, of the Statue of Virginia for Religious Freedom, and father of the University of Virginia. It makes no mention of his presidency. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and donating on Patreon. Donations from $2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.